what I'm about to say may anger a few of you. And regardless of how some of you may feel after my comments, please give my thoughts an objective listen to because my observations may help determine if black set is a solution African Americans should embrace to solve their problems in America and may later encounter in the future. Welcome to Four C's One Family. Welcome to Four C's One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. I'll be talking about something called Blacksit or Blacksitus. Now, these terms refer to actions to get especially African Americans excited about relocating to the lands their ancestors were taken away from. Now, I'll be covering this topic in two segments. Blacksitus has become an enticing business of blogs and books to promote the idea that African Americans need to leave America to find true freedom and equality. And as an African American, I would like to ask if this is the only or the best direction African Americans should be taking. Now, the exact reasons for this movement are many and go way beyond the allotted time I have with you today. These reasons include the enacting of Jim Crow laws, economic uh, disparities, segregation, mass incarceration, environmental degradation, health care and access to education, and the list goes on. Now, the truth is, the founding fathers of America encoded within their constitution the means of oppression that forced Black people into a perpetual state of neglect and servitude. And regardless of the amendments added to grant people of color their civil rights, very little seemed to be moving forward that would allow Black people to uproot themselves and gain better control of their future. However, some barriers have fallen, and they may have fallen either because of forceful diligence of the direct result of the guilt people who control the direction of America felt obligated to concede to gain the respect and freedoms they felt they deserve, some African Americans decided to return to the lands their ancestors were taken away from. Many African Americans feel that their ancestors' lands are the only places they wouldn't have to fight for equality and opportunities. Now, there are other things to consider before taking on such an endeavor that could change the projection of one's personal life and the lives within a community and a nation. There is nothing wrong with yearning for the land of your ancestors. And we see this sentiment from people worldwide who were born in one nation but had relatives or ancestors from another faraway land that they hope one day to connect with. Now, let's take a moment and ask why some people and nations may be promoting Black Set. You see, many emerging nations see immigrants from first world nations as a quick and easy way to develop and modernize their country. So by promoting and providing easy access to people from first world nations, developing nations can get a leg up on their competition while making their resources available to those from overseas lands who have mutual education, cultural or financial goals. Now, keep in mind that Africans are also traveling abroad and getting educated and immigrating to countries worldwide. And many of them do return to Africa with technical and language skills. And these skills are helping their African home nations evolve. And this is good. However, the number of African Americans traveling and getting educated overseas isn't as diversified as the number of continental Africans. Many African Americans immigrating to emerging African nations see their actions as a springboard that can help them expand their careers and financial endeavors, while at the same time, local entrepreneurs and investors may also see the influx of these immigrants to boost their financial portfolios. So this sounds like a win-win situation for everyone involved. However, some long-term unforeseen occurrences can negate the initial short-term engagements. Regardless of culture, ethnicity, or nationality, human nature and its idiosyncrasies must be taken into account. 
Now, do black people in America think that continental Africans in Africa will just step aside and allow them to come in from overseas and take over their jobs and opportunities that were reserved for them? Nope, and um, I find it hard to believe. The truth is, there are a few African Americans who are going to or planning to go to Africa with a savior complex. <gasps> and this isn't helpful. Some African Americans feel that they can go to Africa and miraculously lift up the people. It's an optimistic point of view that is naive, because occasionally this isn't how things usually work out. African Americans who exhibit a savior complex usually end up spending an enormous amount of time telling the native black people in Africa how backward their country is and begin lecturing them on what they should do to make things better within their government, nation, and community when they haven't done the same things to make the lives of people, black people in their own community in America any better. So this situation causes unnecessary misunderstandings, animosity, and tension. You see, I've observed situations like this here in Asia when overseas American-born Chinese, more commonly known as ABCs, would come to China or Taiwan to look for opportunities, but find themselves limited in some ways because they weren't locally bred or cultured. In many ways, they are seen as Americans who can speak the local language and have similar complexions, but share very different social and cultural norms. Differences between people within one's own nation can display similar disparities. For example, people from one part of a country may feel that people from another part of the same country are very different and prefer not to interact with them. In some cases, situations like this has caused serious local disputes and sometimes even civil war. You see, it's never a good idea to walk into someone's home nation, regardless of your relationship with them, and tell them how they should do things or live their lives. Those African Americans who have or who are planning to return to their ancestors' land need to keep in mind that they have historical and cultural differences that aren't 100% understood, appreciated, shared with their genetically related relatives in Africa. Now, this may be hard for some African Americans to hear, but the truth is, some who are hoping for various reasons to go to Africa to begin their new life are getting scammed by people from the African American diaspora, continental Africa, and by so-called immigration brokers, who typically request that money be sent to them for making necessary arrangements for arrival and housing. Some even advertise that they're able to help African Americans find employment in popular local companies. However, the vast majority of them are not licensed travel or immigration services that can legally offer such services. So when an issue does arrive, and it sure will, the person or group sending them the money will most likely never see their money again. So if you're thinking about traveling or immigrating to another country through a broker or another gateway and you are requested to transfer funds, remember, if you can't follow your money, you will surely lose it. Only you and no one else will be to blame. Because many African Americans become impatient and want to live in America as soon as possible, they become easy prey to swindlers who appear to offer the key to a better life. Remember that due diligence is a necessity when investing time and money to travel to a new land or to any place you've never been to. Bad people can be found everywhere, regardless of where you go. In part two of my discussion, I'll be talking specifically about how Blackset can be seen as a detrimental movement that has slowed down the progress African Americans have made in the U.S. today. So stay tuned. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. 
Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan, and remember to take care of yourself wherever you are in the world.